This is Pear Shaped in Dystopia. Every Wednesday night at half past eight. Yes, it's Pear Shaped, and we hope y'all come to see us and don't be late. Yes, it's Pear Shaped. It's just a fiver to come in, and we hope that you'll be coming back again to Pear Shaped in Dystopia. Every Wednesday night at half. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to Fair Shaped again. Uh, can you get rid of that thing there? Because it's, um, it's... No, I can't. It's sort of uh, annoying me. I don't know how to. It's, uh, oh, God. Compare There's it. something on our screen. Don't worry about it. You're Just be professional. Keep going, stuff. love. Be professional. Keep All going. Right. Whatever happens, keep uh, going. I'm Brian. This is uh, Crystal, my glamorous uh, assistant. And by glamorous, I mean the... Uh, covid equivalent of uh of uh, glamorous and um you've made a lot of effort tonight haven't you well you're i'm quite... wearing pers purple for the um of the um holocaust Memorial yeah day that's nice so yeah, now i actually she... wear purple all the time but don't so you that. you match wembley stadium tonight that's, yeah that's nice right? i've just realized who we've got on the bill on holocaust memorial day oh yeah, yeah. oh jesus that's yeah. good timing isn't it all right Never mind. yeah so... <laughs> 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 lovely surprise for everybody later <laughs> it, it never occurred to me um yeah okay never mind so, um, there we go um yeah so we're uh, this is our fourth episode uh, two of them started off as uh, utter disasters and uh it's repaired themselves with a little bit of help from me it took about uh, it's taken about uh, three weeks to edit them to make them respectable and uh, last week everything went fine it, it was all just right about, yeah. yeah it just sort of went fine uh, with a, a little bit of uh, sound uh, terrible sound on the one of the acts but we managed to fix that as well so that's all right um brian is hiding behind a qr code yeah and that is um uh, well, we thought, seeing as we're getting the hang of this, we might ask people to donate some money if they feel like it. Yeah. So just well, uh, flash your flash your phone on the QR code at any point. At any point, only if you feel the urge. Only now, if you feel the, the, the urge. The difference is you that can wait till the end. Really. As far as I'm concerned, you can stay. You don't have to pay anything. No, but she's it's free. she's just very cold. She's a very cold woman. Uh, we've been well, married I'm twenty of years. All the starving and, comedians. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm you know as long was there warm I, i'm okay with them but yeah. you're, you're not starving but you are cold i'm a bit cold yeah you are cold yeah. so uh yeah we've got a few acts for you tonight and uh, uh they're all people who have been at pear shape before uh, that says a lot for them um that that means that they're, they're top acts and um uh and we got them back and they've they've come back yeah. which we It's uh, just sort of sitting there staring in space mm -hmm. um right well i think we should um we should introduce a, the first act anyway we were just oh. rambling on for no apparent reason yeah all right who is the first act oh i know who it is it's it's uh dicky richards yeah dicky richard he's got jokes yeah that's i think that's cheating really. that's not pear shaped that's uh, not pear shaped it, it, it's got jokes, jokes. Dickie Richards, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everyone. And we don't my name is Dickie Richards. Or... I've just discovered two aliens having sex in my garden. It's just one thing on top of another. I've heard that Willy Wonka's chocolate factory is at the close down. Nothing to do with the pandemic. Short-staffed. A friend of mine died a couple of weeks ago. Nothing to do with the pandemic. No, he fell off a boat in Venice and drowned. Now, I couldn't go to the funeral, so I just sent my condolences. Now, I'm all right after having COVID. Uh, my sense of taste hasn't come back. I'm still listening to Dido. Uh, I watched that film recently. I watched JFK. Very well shot. 
Now, that's not the best joke I've ever written, but the thing about that joke is that you will remember exactly where you were when you heard it. Now, when they told me my brain surgeon also installs home security systems, that really set the alarm bells off in my head. Now, it uh, sounds very glamorous to be recognised, doesn't it? I got recognised the other week and, uh, as I say, it sounds very glamorous, but uh, I was in an identity parade. Now, my mate was an osteopath, but he moved to Egypt. Now he's a chiropractor. They, uh, they say you live by the sword, you die by the sword. And well, that's why I moved away from my neighbour, Mr. Wilkinson. They say giving up smoking is good for your health, but didn't do my granddad any good. Now, as soon as he finished his last cigarette, they shot him. They say two heads are better than one, but I think they mean eyebrows. Yeah, my favourite position is the doggy position. That's right, lying in front of the fire going, gizzard sausage. I like mullets, that's the long and the short of it. I did some internet dating, it went all right. I met a really thin girl on Match.com. Uh, I once had a girlfriend who was a suicide bomber. Now, I disagreed with her fundamentally on almost everything. And one day we had a big argument and, well, she just went off in a huff. I find it interesting when famous people die, there's lots of public outpourings of grief on social media, lots of stuff about them on the news, but no one mentions ordinary people when they die. And I'll give you an example. Do you remember when Lemmy from Motorhead died? Big public outpourings of grief on social media, lots of stuff about him on the news, but no one mentioned all the other Lemmys that followed him off the cliff. Now, I like famous people. I've seen some famous people. I've seen, uh, I saw uh, uh, Bono from U2. Yeah, he was in a charity shop. He was rifling through the bargain bin. I said, all right, Bono, you still looking, mate? I saw Len Goodman. Yeah, he came tap dancing out of an STD clinic. He still got it. And I saw Warwick Davis standing next to a big horse. I said, all right, Warwick, how are you getting on? Yeah, I once had a girlfriend who said to me, Dickie, I can do an impression of your penis. I said, can you? She said, yeah, it's not hard, is it? I've been hurt in love. It's my own fault for getting married to a wrestler. I know it was awful. Every time the alarm clock rang, she'd have me in a headlock. Every time the doorbell rang, she'd grapple me to the floor. In the end, I was just too frightened to, to use the microwave. You know, when she was a bully, she had a pet name for my willy. You know what she used to call it? She used to call it Little Hulk Hogan. She used to say, oh, I'm looking forward to getting Little Hulk Hogan in the ring later. I don't know what she meant. But the final straw was when she gave me the Boston Crab. So I divorced her. Yeah, oh, God, she was greedy. She took everything. She took the houses. She took the cars. She took the money. She took the iron. She even took the dog. But you know what? I got it all back. That's right. Straight after the divorce, I went to the shop and I got myself a new Monopoly set. Yeah, and uh, she used to sleep on the mantelpiece. Yeah, she was a, a trophy wife. But I'm pleased for her. I'm pleased for her because uh, she's uh, got herself a sugar daddy. Yeah, she's shacked up with some big fat diabetic geezer. Now, I've had some one-night stands recently. I had a one-night stand with a waitress. And shortly after we started making love, she stopped and said, is everything all right for you? I had a one-night stand with a hairdresser. And shortly after we started making love, she stopped and said, have you booked anywhere nice for your holidays? I had a one-night stand with a taxi driver. And shortly after we started making love, she stopped and said, have you got anything smaller? Now, this is exciting. It's exciting doing this, ladies and gentlemen, but it's not the most excited I've ever been in my life. Let me tell you the most excited I've ever been in my life. And that's when I had an Irish girlfriend who was about the same age as me. And she still lived at home with her mum and dad. And after about a week of being together, she said to me, Dickie, come, uh, come for Sunday lunch and meet my mum and dad. So I went to her house Sunday lunch and uh, I met her mum and dad and her mum was lovely. But her dad was a monster. He was a big, muscly geezer with a bald head, wearing a string vest, tattoos all over his arm. And he's just glaring at me like that, glaring at me. Anyway, my girlfriend and her mum went to the kitchen and he said to me, now, look here, we are strict Catholics and we don't believe in sex before marriage. If I find that you've been having sex or trying to have sex with my daughter, I'm going to tear you limb from limb. Do you understand? I said, yes, sir, I understand. No problem. Anyway, that night I'm saying goodnight to my girlfriend on the doorstep. And she said, Dickie, tonight I'm going to leave my bedroom window open. I want you to climb in. I want you to make love to me in my own bed. I said, I can't do that. If your dad's just warned me off. He'll tear me limb from limb. She said, Dickie, it'll be exciting. So I did, That's right? I climbed in her bedroom window that night, got into her bed and I made love to her. And all the time I'm making love to her, I'm terrified her dad's gonna come in and catch me and tear me limb from limb. And she was right, she was right, it was exciting. Yes, folks, that, that was the most exciting 12 and a half seconds of my life. Now, I've been to see my mum and dad this week. Yes, I haven't seen them for a while. Uh, and they've been having some work done in their house. And, and I walked in and my mum said to me, she went, hello, son, how are you? Your dad's just in the kitchen. Yeah, he's seen you pull up. He's just got the kettle on. Yeah, he won't be a second. Yeah, he's just making you a cup of tea. And my mum, right, she's riding one of those mechanical rodeo bulls right in the middle of her front room. 
right? And the whole place is done out like a Western saloon. Right, my dad came out the kitchen through these flappy doors, got me a cup of tea, slid it up the bar to me. I caught the cup of tea. I looked at me dad, I said, dad, what's going on? And my poor dad, my poor dad looked at me and he said, bloody cowboy builders. That's enough from me. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. See you next time. Bye now. Ah, oh, that was Dickie Richards with his uh, with his jokes, which uh, we we don't always have. Um, we didn't always have them pear shape, but we we had he has jokes. Um, there's no one to do banter with, so that just really leaves jokes. So I've been trying to think of jokes like uh, I don't know. I found out the other day it takes a team of abseilers a week. Uh, a week to paint all four sides of Big Ben and clean it. And that's working round the clock. So that's a joke. Um, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Why was the bank robber grasped up by the hole in the wall? Because it was an automatic teller machine. Uh, that's, these are silly jokes. Um, I, I, I normally do kind of observation. Like, uh, There's a lot of things to observe in the world, like uh, that a mystery is like, I don't know why there hasn't been a live action version of the Lego movie. Because there's been a live action version of uh, everything that there shouldn't have been that was made into a cartoon, like the Jungle Book. So, which was a boring book, and then they made it into an interesting film, and now they've made it back into a boring film by making it live. So, uh, this is like the, uh, this is like the uh, sort of live action version of, of Pear Shaped. If it was live, um, and there was nobody there, which there never was, but Anyway, I don't know. Um, how to, I, I just you give advice really from here. Things like have children. I think you should all have children because we've got an aging population. So if we if you don't have children, there'll be no one to pay your pension. Uh, that's 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 what the politicians tell us anyway. Because they don't tell you at the same time as the children that are being born are also getting fatter and fatter. So if you work it out as a volume to surface area ratio, there's as many children now as in 1945. By 2150, there'll just be an enormous Billy Bunter child the size of Paul's Cathedral, and you'll all be working to support that. That's why the Occupy movement had to camp outside there to prevent that happening. Uh, that, that was a load of nonsense, the Occupy movement. I mean, I'm an old lefty, but I think there should be minimum qualifications for protest, like you should have to be awake. Because if falling asleep in the city of London was a form of political protest, I did that in my office opposite the Bank of England for about five years, and nothing happened, except I was made redundant. Um, so it doesn't really work. Um, incidentally, if you want to finish a political discussion, uh, you just use the words economic neoliberalism. It doesn't matter if it's left wing, right wing, socialist, whatever, uh, green or, or world saving the planet. Just say the words economic neoliberalism and everyone will leave you alone because no one understands it. Anyway, that's a bit of waffle to bridge the gap between the acts. So I'm going to put the next act on who actually has jokes as well. Um, so can we have some love and appreciation, please? from all the people who we can't hear. For the one from Mr. Don Biswas. Thank you, Anthony. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Brian. Uh, uh, my name is Don. Uh, I'm not from here, which is the internet. Uh, I'm from a place called Wimbledon, which is the home of tennis. Also true about me is I have a learning difficulty called dyspraxia, which, among other things, affects my uh, coordination skills. Therefore, I am terrible at sport. So as you can imagine, growing up in Wimbledon, the home of tennis in the mid-90s, and having coordination difficulties. Do you know what that made me? British number three. Uh, everyone's talking about the pandemic, obviously. I was prepared then most, because I live with my overbearing Indian mother. So I've been in lockdown for 37 fucking years. Uh, Boris Johnson's doing a bad deal or bad job of handling the pandemic. I think he's behaving like a bit of a dictator. Uh, so much so, some people reckon that sometime this year, Richie Sunak will become the first British Indian Prime Minister. Or as his parents call it, still not a doctor. Uh, my comedy is I'm a political comedian. It's all about celebrating diversity. I think we should celebrate it wherever we can, whether it's Black History Month, Dyspraxia Awareness Week, or even National ADHD Minute. I'm a left-wing socialist, but I do corporate gigs because I'm broken and need the money. Hashtag hypocrite. Last year, I did a corporate gig for IKEA and purposely missed out some of the punchlines and the jokes just to see how they'll like it. 
I remember that gig. I got a standing ovation. I don't mean to brag. I don't mean to boast, but I got a standing ovation. Uh, uh, that's because no one knew how to assemble the chairs. So, pandemic's been an important issue. So is racism. I found out the other day that my girlfriend is against Black Lives Matter. But stupidly, I still want to propose. I'm just worried if I get down on one knee, she'll start booing me. And speaking of romance, after the new European negotiations have finished, single Brexiters can now find love on dating websites. No more fish. Politically speaking, I'm a conspiracy theorist as well. So uh, what does that mean? It means I'm into loads of things. First of all, the other day I tried to look as a conspiracy theorist, look for Flat Earth magazine on the internet. The closest I could find was Slimming World. Being a conspiracy theorist means I have questions about the lockdown. And don't judge me on this. Don't judge me on this. But the other day, I went on an anti-mask rally. Obviously, I didn't want anyone to know. So I wore a face covering. I have things I want to know about the pandemic that have not been answered. Like, uh, uh, why are we counting false positives? Can asymptomatic people transfer the virus? In fact, the amount of people who died is not people who directly died of COVID. Why doesn't the news channel say it's anyone who's tested positive for COVID and then suddenly died? It could have been of a car crash or something else. Uh, why don't the members of SAGE admit their financial interests to see if there's any conflicts there? Now, I went with these questions to my boss at work during my day job. And do you know what he said? He said, Don, these are inappropriate for a pub quiz. Uh, basically, what I'm trying to say is I don't trust Bill Gates and Bill Gates has a hand in the vaccinations. I don't know why we put all our money, all our global health policy into a billionaire who broke compilation laws in the 1990s. Uh, surely there should be checks and balances. And Bill Gates, I'm not saying Microsoft products are bad, but Bill Gates has achieved his vaccine quicker to the marketplace than it takes a Windows 10 to update on my fucking laptop. Uh, if you want to explain my weird stage presence, by the way, before I move on, is I am also slightly autistic. Generally, the true story. Several years ago, diagnosed with a mild form of Asperger's. If you don't know what it is, it's a form of autism where you have problems communicating with people. Basically, you can't read someone else's body language. Nah. I don't think I've got this Asperger's. I wouldn't be here today. Looking people in the eye, trying to tell jokes. And anyway, one of the symptoms of Asperger's, the doctor said I had no word of a lie, was having one-sided conversations with other people. Give guess that that's not Asperger's syndrome, but the doctor has described there as a stand-up comedian. I'm starting to think what happened several years ago when I got tested. My results got mixed up with someone who is genuinely autistic. And now what's happened, I'll tell you what's happened, there's some kind of Rain Man-like figure out there on the circuit who's been told by a doctor he's a fucking comedian. By the way, I haven't got Asperger's. I tell a lie there. My actual diagnosis was mild traits of Asperger's. So I'm not Rain Man. I'm more Drizzle Boy. And it, and it makes me a quite awkward person. Most awkward thing I've done, genuinely true story, last week I was caught masturbating at the airport. To which the security guard came up to me and said, what do you think you're doing, fella? To which I replied, I'm making sure I don't carry liquids over 100 mils. Uh, my time's nearly up. I'll leave with a couple more things. First of all, uh, talking about conspiracies, I try and see myself as some kind of anti-establishment comedian. Some of my heroes include Bill Hicks and Lenny Bruce, the latter who got arrested for the words he said. But how can I be an anti-establishment comedian when I still live with my mum? How can I say fuck the system when I'm 37 and I still have a bedtime? By the way, I'm smiling. Get to stay out late tonight. And I'll leave with this. I am not anti-establishment comedian. I am very much an outsider, like most of my friends who are autistic on the spectrum or have dyspraxia or some kind of other learning difficulty. And they've had their benefits cruelly taken away from this government. And do you know what I did during that time? Don't judge me on this. But I did my second corporate gig ever for the Department of Work and Pensions, the people who administer universal credit. But I turned up six weeks late just to see how they'll fucking like it. Thanks very much. I've been done business. Ladies and gentlemen, Don Biswas, what a great comedian. So, never try and explain things. Oh, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Fucking loop back, I say. If you want to <laughs> play with. Oh. Right. Back to Brian? Absolutely marvellous there, Alan. I don't know uh, how you managed to get such a great sound. Uh, absolutely fantastic. I, I, are you a fan of Doctor Who? <coughs> and uh, thank you, Al, uh, on your mandolin. You sounded fucking terrible as well. I don't know if it's the internet or if it's you. Oh. Now, are you ready? Uh, yes. Hello, Madge. Hello, Monty. Well, what a week it's been. Yes, we've both been working jolly hard. But here we are again. Where the washing, ironing, cooking, the scrubbing. Or in the garden, too. Madge and Monty's handy hints are, are just, just the same thing for you. you. Madge's tips and Monty's hints will, will help, help you through, through the day. day. Saving time and energy. In the most effective way. Monty Potter's in his shed. And Madge is kitchen bound. Wherever there's a problem, Madge and Monty can, can be, be found. found. Well, Madge, do you have any tips for us here this evening apart from get loop back and sort out your fucking sound? Yes, and have better internet connections. Yes. Um, yes, I've got lots and lots of tips actually. Really? Belt tips, asparagus tips, racing tips, safety tips, cotton tips. In fact, the only tips you won't find in our little book are rubbish tips. <laughs> Gosh, Matt, what a marvellous sense of humour you have yes. for a woman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'm not just woman, Monty. I'm British. Hurrah! <laughs> Things to do with jammy jars, just fill them up with flowers. Yes. Darning pills and hubby's socks. To while away the hours. Making magic potions to remove unwanted stains. Madge has lots of tips for you, so why not pick her brain? Yes. Well, what do you think of the audience? Gosh, Madge, what a marvellous audience. I think they're absolutely top class and tickety boo. I, uh, uh, and I think if... And you can't remember what you normally say, can you? They enjoy themselves all the more. Pardon? If they had a few more on my hand, I'd say enjoy themselves all the more. Well, I'm sure they would. Now I can't remember what I normally say. <laughs> you normally say, uh, can you speak a little faster, Madge? Can you speak a little faster, Madge? I think one or two of them might have missed that. Well, I probably can. Even when you're very busy watching the nice, could be baking, saying, looking after little ones from Johnny Good or our house five, I still had to enjoy myself. And you still managed to look a perfect picture of health and beauty. Yes. How on earth do you do it, Madge? It's quite simple, really. I'm British. Hurrah! I'm having trouble with my plumbing, yes. which I don't quite understand. Well, never fear. Monty's here with his plunger in his hand. It's an old-fashioned knob gag, isn't it? Uh, yes, I just thought I'd slip it in. Yes, for an old-fashioned knob. Thank you. Thank now you can slip it in. Never yes. mind. Um, there's a problem in the kitchen. The oven door is stuck. Well, don't you get on top of you, dear. Just stop, lay back, think of England and have a jolly nice cup of tea. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, chocolate fingers, dear. Oh, yes, that reminds me. What does it remind me of? Uh, you should always wash your hands after messing around with my plumbing. Always wash your hands after messing around with Madge's plumbing. Yes. I think you got away with that one, dear. I think I got away with that one, dear. Mm. Yes. It's funny how your act changes when you don't do it for six months. Yes, or longer. Now, um, do you have any more handy hot hints? For I me? probably do, Madge. I wonder what they are. Oh, it's probably something to do with, well, handy hot hints. Do you have any more handy hot hints, Madge? It's funny you should ask that, Monty, because I have more hot hints than you could poke a penis at. <laughs> yeah, you mean stick, don't you, Madge? Poke do a stick. I? Yes, that's the expression. It's an yeah. easy mistake. Yes. Anybody could make mm -hmm. it, especially a woman. All right. Well, thanks awfully, Monty. You're a stick. No, I'm a brick, Madge. Brick. Ah, yes. That's the other expression. Yes. 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 With a capital P. Thank <laughs> you. Let me just get on with the tits, dear. Tips, Monty. Tips. You seem to be having consonant problems. Oh, yes. Consonantly. <laughs> oh! 
Oh. Isn't it wonderful to have it's, a sense of humour? It's fantastic. <laughs> and of course we're British. Yes. The best in the world. Now, my final tip is how to dry off a damp puppy. You have a silly man, you don't have a puppy. However, you do have a... Uh, <laughs> yes, thank you. Yes, yes, thank you. Yes. 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 Just pop your little wet animal in a warm oven to dry off for a few minutes. Oh, make sure it's not turned up too high, of course. Yeah, otherwise you'll probably end up with a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, if you have a wet husband, there's very little one can do. On the other hand, if you have a wet one... Yes, I think that's all we have time for yeah. this week, Monty. Right, Madge's tips and Monty's hints will help you through the day. Yes. Saving time and energy in, in the, the most effective, effective way. way. Madge's tips and Monty's hints on these you can rely. At, At only one and sixpence in the shops for you to buy. Thank you so much. Yes. Now we have two minutes of Pat and Math. Lovely. Or Math and Pat. Whichever way around Pat you want to say. Pat and Matt. Pat and Matt. Here Matt. they come. Hi, Sean. Hello, Catherine. And welcome, people, to Two Minutes with Pat and Matt. Yeah, uh, we're recording this remotely. Uh, nothing to do with lockdown. We just don't really like each other very much. At all? No, no. At all. I'd, I'd go as far to say at all. Loathe. Loathe, I'd go. Yeah. Loathing. If anything, it's strange that we're doing this because no one asked us to. No. <laughs> Just giving something back. <laughs> yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I'm like the NHS, yeah. um, if it was a person. Mm. Uh, horrible. <laughs> horrible loathing person. You've got a question for us, I understand, Catherine. Uh, I do, yeah. Uh, how have you been keeping yourself busy during lockdown? Well, funny you should mention the NHS because I've been doing a lot of um, clapping. Ah. Um, flamenco reasons. The, you know, the dance. Yeah, the... yeah. Ah. Yeah, I'm good at that, but that's, that's a given. It's... Yeah. The hips. Yeah. So that's mainly that. Uh, yourself, what have you been up to? Uh, well, as you well know, I'm I'm very busy with the puppy farm. Oh yeah, yeah. always have been, always, always will, will be. be. Yeah, mm. um, yeah. There's what been are you um, doing with the little guys. Oh, they're all right. I mean, the problem is they do often get bigger. Yeah. Um. But, I mean, I'll just sell them. I've been hoping to try and cross a um, a Rottweiler with a Chihuahua. You know, for, like, people who have an apartment and they, they want yeah, a guard yeah. dog. But small. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a strong idea. I uh -huh. would see, if you could manage it, a cross between a Basset Hound yeah. and Debbie McGee. Yes, that's a good idea. Because they've both got the sad eyes. So exactly. everyone... Loose bowels. Yeah. <laughs> Pat and Math, that was, with uh, their loose bowels and, um, and, and puppy farm. Uh, um, we've, we've all uh, tried to run a puppy farm. Um, go compare. Yeah, go compare. Go compare, it's a price-fixing syndicate, that's unfair. It should be investigated and the boss defrenstrated and legislated and banished until it's gone into thin air. That is my song for the week. Uh, uh, good, uh, so Don was talking about being autistic when I was very lucky. When I was a kid, we didn't have autistics or dyslexics or dyspraxics. We were all just remedial, which is the Greek word for, no, you're not going to have an education, just build things. Um, uh, yeah, so anyway, this is entertainment, by the way, in case you've tuned into this and wonder what it is, like uh, the great Harry Potter saga, where we discovered at the end that, although he is a bit weird, he would have been uh, uh, better off in a mainstream school. Good. Um, uh, we have some feedback. I see Ava online said "boo, uh, boo." Yeah, and um, uh, you're very, uh, you're very lucky. I could be watching a zombie horror film from Korea. Um, so there we are. So there's a, there is a, there is an audience out there um, of one. Now there's about three people who've commented. I think. Um, yes. Uh, 
uh, I, this is my attempt to, to do banter with the internet. It hasn't really worked. I was never really good at banter. I, I was never like, you know, I'm not one of those acts. I, I was more like the queen, you know, hello, what do you do? Hello, what do you do? Hello, what do you do? I would just turn to the queen. Um, yeah. So you think of them as normal people, but they're not. So like the queen, the queen is kept in perfect health all the time. Um, like Prince Philip. So they're pumped with stem cells by private doctors in the NHS 24-7. So that's why you hear occasionally that Prince Philip has been held in hospital as a precaution, because if they don't separate the Queen and Prince Philip, uh, occasionally the number of royals would just expand exponentially and they'd take over. Good. Uh, so um, I think that's a link. So we'll move on to the next act, who is the one for Mr. Roger Lane. Well, good evening everyone. I am Roger Lane and welcome to my world of sit-down comedy. I thought I'd better start by telling you my name in case you're looking in, seeing an old man sitting in an armchair talking bollocks and thinking, blimey, they've reincarnated Ronnie Corbett for the evening. Others may look in and think, that Bernie Sanders looks a lot different now he hasn't got the mittens and the mask on. Hang on, I can do the Bernie Sanders pose for you. That's the one that's been photoshopped all over Facebook lately. But no, I am indeed Roger Lane and I am a comedian. Allegedly. I say allegedly because my journey into the world of stand-up comedy has been a very steep learning curve for me and on a number of occasions. For example, when I first started in this game, uh, I before that I would have been the sort of person who was described as my own worst critic. No one would ever say anything worse about me than I would say about myself. And then suddenly I find myself in front of audiences who are shouting and screaming things at me far worse than I'd ever begun to imagine about myself. My leading critic in comedy and indeed in life is my long term partner. And um, it often amazes audiences to discover that I have got a long term partner. It gets a reaction often a mixture of incredulity, surprise and concern that anybody would share their life with me. But hey, I'm a performer. I'll take a round of applause however it comes. When I first told my partner I wanted to get involved in comedy some 15 years ago, her words to me were, and I quote, the biggest problem you're going to have is you're not at all funny. Sage advice. I would have done well to have heeded because I at the time had no idea how big an incumbent not being funny would be to a would-be stand-up comedian. Interesting as well, as far as she's concerned, that was only the major problem, not the only problem by any stretch of the imagination. I'm guessing supplementary problems include things like, I'm quite old, I look a bit strange, I forget things, and I sometimes ramble on a bit. But hey, I'm making the best of it and living the dream. I'm also aware that some people looking in may be quite disappointed to discover that I am in a long-term relationship and are therefore not available for romantic liaisons. Because some of you may be looking in thinking, well, he's not all that, but there's a lockdown on, and fuck it, he'll do. But no, I've, we've been together now for 25 years, I say, and uh, five years ago, we made the decision, I say we, what I really mean, of course, is my now wife made the decision that we've been happy quite long enough, and what we really should do was take the plunge and get married. And that is exactly what we did. Been married five years now. And whilst I joke about it, I have to say to you that generally speaking, I really rather like being married. I enjoy the security. I enjoy the stability. All right, I miss the sex. But then again, you can't have everything. We're making the best as we go along. And one of the things that we realised when we went into lockdown last year was um, we were going to be very, very careful not to find new creative ways to annoy each other even more. Because after 25 years, you develop quite a portfolio of peccadilloes to annoy other people with. So my wife hatched a cunning strategy to save us from each other. What she decided we would do was I would go out for lots and lots of long walks while she stayed in the comfort of our house reading books and watching the television. Well, that suited me rather well, actually, because you might remember when we went into lockdown, we had some quite nice, hot, sunny weather and I was having a lovely time wandering around. But then I started to get a little bit concerned about the effect of the sun on my skin and thought, Do you know what? If I'm not careful, I'm going to end up with a wrinkly face like an old man's scrotum. I've got to get myself some skin care. 
So I popped into Boots the Chemist and got myself some sunblock. Marvellous stuff. Factor 85. It was so bloody good. The first time I put it on, the fucking sun went in. Anyway, while I was in the chemist, I decided to buy my wife a present. Went across the lipstick counter, picked out a nice colour lipstick. Cost me seven quid, but I thought, fuck it, 25 years, she's worth it. Took it home, presented it, thinking today could be my lucky day. Oh, how wrong I was. I gave her the lipstick and she didn't say a word. I knew she was cross because she gave me that look. That look that says, you're in trouble. More trouble than you could begin to imagine. I'm not going to tell you what it is you've done wrong. You're going to have to ask me and then I'll tell you. I have to say after 25 years that my breaking strain is severely reduced. I have the resistance these days of a damp tissue. So I capitulated immediately and said, tell me my love, what is it I've done on this occasion to offend you? And she told me about a book she had been reading in which it was suggested that men want women to wear lipstick in order to make their mouths look more like vaginas. Now, some of you may have heard this idea before. Some of you may think it's true. I've got to tell you that I don't believe it. I think it's utter bollocks and I'll tell you why it's bollocks. Because if that were the case, then surely I would find myself attracted to women who had little beards and moustaches. I'm aware as I say that I do to some extent reveal my age in suggesting that adult women, women should be the proud possessors of lady gardens, which according to what I see on the TV programme Naked Attraction, is no longer the case. I don't know if you've seen Naked Attraction. It's an interesting program. A group of people who are so deprived of attention and affection are willing to appear on nationwide television naked, completely naked, inviting public humiliation, criticism and scorn in the vague hope that somebody may agree to cop off with them. And when I put it like that, it does start to sound a bit like quite a lot, lot of the nights I had out when I was still a single man. But that's a story for another day. Anyway, none of these people have got body hair. And interestingly, all the men have got incredibly tiny willies. I'll call that my sales pitch for the evening. So, with this information in mind, I decided to prove my wife wrong. A silly mistake, I think you will agree. I took the lipstick, I put some on myself. I had a look in the mirror, and I did look a bit of a cunt. So maybe she was right after all. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Roger Lane. It's been a pleasure speaking to you this evening. This is considerably cheaper for me than paying for professional marital therapy. Thank you and good night. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Roger Lane. Roger Lane, the only, the only comedian on the bill tonight named after uh, the red light district. Roger Lane. Ah. Oh. I don't wanna red lights. I'm sad and I'm blue, I don't know what to do. I'm a rare Patagonian, Patagonian toothfish. How can I get a kiss when I'm looking like this? I'm a rare Patagonian toothfish. A man on a ship with a big A man on a ship with a hook in my lip. A man on a ship with a hook in my lip. I'm a rare Patagonian toothfish. I'm stuck in a net, people seem to forget. I'm a rare Patagonian toothfish. I'm a rare Patagonian toothfish. I live on my own in the sea. Stop! Patagonian toothfish, there must be somebody for me. A hot Patagonian toothfish, I'm looking to get me a wife. There's nobody there, we're so fucking rare. Could take me the rest of my life. Yeah, 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 a hot Patagonian toothfish, I really don't know what to do. If I had a wish, then you'd be a fish, and I'd make a meal out of you. You look a bit scrawny, but God, I'm so horny, I think I might settle for you. Oh, that's for all the people with COVID teeth. Um, yes, our next act does not seem to be on... Is, is is what? It's not there. It's not there. Oh, there it's coming. There he is. Coming through. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, our, our, our uh, virtually final act of the evening, the one and only Mr. Frank Sinazzi. Thank you. Uh, <laughs>
Yeah, I know we're family. Yeah, yeah, but I, I only do blondes with blue eyes. Yeah. Clapping for the NHS, yeah. Well, I know just what you're doing tonight. I've got the feeling that something's far right. It's so hard to put a smile on my face. Because I'm totally sick of this place. Guards to the left of me. Ava, she's all right. Here I am, stuck in this bunker with you. Yes, I'm stuck in this bunker with you. And I don't know what it is I should do. I'm pacing up and down across the floor. What in hell did I go to the kitchen for? Guys to the left of me. Eva, she's far right. Here I am, stuck in the bunker with you. Yes, I started out quite happy and I soon became a broken man. Then some German second calling, knocking on my door, said Frank, please, please, Frank, bring the world to its knees. Far right. I'm trying to make him sense of it all. And I'll end up giving Churchill a call. This poor is all I'm waiting for. And I'm waiting for this knock on the door. Spear to the left of me. Big light to the right. Here I am, stuck in the bunker with you. Funny dance. To the left, to the right. To the left, to the right. To the left, to the right. Well, I started out with nothing, but I soon had a master plan! Then some Nazis they came calling, knocking on my door, said Frank, please, please Frank, bring the world to its knees. Far right. We can all lose a dance. Yeah. Yes, I'm stuck in the bunker with you. Oh, I'm stuck in this lockdown with you. Yes, we're stuck in the bunker like you. Oh, we're stuck in the lockdown, it's true. Guards to the left of me. Get in tonight! Here I am, stuck in this bunker with you. We're all stuck in this place like a zoo. Yes, we're stuck in the bunker like you. Turkey Mick Jagger all of a sudden. Dankeschön. <laughs> Willkommen, guten Abend. Guten Abend. Germany calling. Germany calling. Good. Uh, nice uh, of you to invite me here tonight, uh, Crystal uh, and Brian, because I was one of the first performers on pear shaped uh, dystopia, my favorite thing, dystopia. Yeah, for all in dystopia. Um, Pear-shaped, of course, where the whole world's going pear-shaped now. Like this, in the lockdown, everybody's pear-shaped. Yeah, like this. Yeah, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Maybe we should do the workout. Battle of the Bulge, gone. Yeah, you can do the Frank workout. Of course you can, because um, what we all need to do is, of course, we need to, um, first of all, my hair is just, yeah. Uh, we need to do the um, workout for the arms. Up here, the armies, the armies, the armies, there, yeah, to this, yeah, to stay fit, 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 yeah, and then also for the legs, the goose stepping, <laughs> goose stepping, <laughs> get some kicks up, get get your kicks on Route 66. Uh, here, we can buy on my my own website, yeah, uh, there's some German pants there. This is good for the workout of Deutschland. Pants there, extreme white, of course. There, and this is good for running around the streets. 
Yeah, looking like uh, 1936, Jesse Owen. <laughs> uh, beautiful there, yeah? Nice and clean. Obviously wash it a nice hot wash, yeah, with your white goods in the kitchen, yeah. Yeah, it's good. So, nice little workout there. We can all do this together. Um, and perhaps some of the Iraq pack, my buddy's the Iraq pack. Of course, I'm Frank Sinassi, the leader, the Ubermeister of the Iraq pack. Uh, you might you might have heard of us, uh, the other guys, Saddam, of course, Saddam, Saddam e. Davis Jr., um, uh, Dino Stalin, Dean Stalin, and Osama bin Crosby. Of course, the four singers, the apocalypse is what they call us. Uh, we'll all be doing this little workout together while we're so bored. It's a boring in lockdown, isn't it? Even the Ger the Germans, they are taking it very, very serious. Say seriously at the moment, they've uh, in their hospitals, they're putting the towels down on their bed straight away because they know they're in trouble. Yeah, so just get their early beds. Yeah, that's always good. So, anyway, so the workout is one thing to keep fit. I mean, let's keep our saneness about us. Yeah, keep the sane, the, 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 the marbles in the right place. It's as Germans are all about efficiency, you see. Um, now, the thing is, um, another thing you can do, um, of course is to uh for keeping fit is to play football now i like to play football um a lot of people in the uk like to play uh, 11 aside or they like a bit of fitness for the five aside i of course prefer genocide <laughs> yeah uh of course i was a very good penalty taker which the english hate yeah and i played on the extreme right wing which was good very fast down the right wing yeah and cutting in behind enemy lines down the right wing always good the, the English, they hated this, but here we go. Here, here we go. I said, what's going on? What's going on? Pear-shaped, what's going on? What's going on? Could you imagine if Marvin Gaye were German? That's just how that song would sound. It, just like that. It's beautiful. Um, now, the good thing about football, of course, it is, uh, it's two halves, 45. I can never get past 45. <laughs> 45 minutes, uh, two minutes, uh, two lots of 45. Um, and it's a, it's a good game to keep the uh, angles up there. A lot of comedians have struggled in lockdown. I know this for my, myself. I mean, I've lost loads of gigs. I've, uh, oh, my, my hair, my hair's going queer. queer. <laughs> uh, <this>, mine can't. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of comedians lost gigs, of course, in, um, in lockdown. I've lost a lot of gigs. Uh, of course, I was doing a lot of work for Jeremy Corbyn and uh, the Labour Party. Uh, in fact, I lost a gig last week and not, nothing to do with him. It was in uh, Stamford Hill uh, last uh, last weekend. 150 wedding guests. If you call me up the last minute, kaput. Don't know what was going on there. Uh, I saw them clambering across the fence. <laughs> like some good old days. <laughs> anyway, I didn't get paid. Awful times. Uh, yeah, Jeremy Corbyn. I didn't get any gigs for him anymore. Um, used to do the odd rally and you keep not getting any work from them so it's it's tough it's really tough for us comedians in, in times like this um now for that matter I, I mean on a positive note though i did get a pardon uh from donald trump by my comedy in the last day give me a pardon one of the pardons there. uh but of course we're another u.s comedy dictator down you know all we've got left is putin 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 on the blitz <laughs> putin on the tits uh Put on the Blitz is one of my albums, actually. I love the album uh, there. Yeah, it's great. It's a great album. Got to say, great. Get your chance. You've got to buy it. Um, we're going to lose him as well soon, I think, before before long. They're dropping like flies. Yeah. Dropping like flies. Um, I've got a, I mean, got to, can't be too long. The bombs are dropping already, as I say. And uh, we've already shot the neighbors twice. Um, but uh, yeah, my album. Uh, the last one, of course, uh, Putin on the Blitz. And we had Songs for Swinging Leaders, which was very successful. Uh, unfortunately, my Christmas album, uh, Frank's White Christmas, just didn't sell at all. Uh, songs, some wonderful songs for my daughter here, Nancy Sinatsi. Yeah, you see her here. There she's there, with Lee Hazelwood, Nancy Sinatsi. She she does Jack Boots are made for walking. Wonderful thing there, uh, of course. But uh, the album, it, it didn't sell at uh, the album didn't sell at all, uh, which was a shame because I had some lovely tracks, Frank's White Christmas songs like um, Rudolph Hess Knows Pain Deer, um, lovely song there, uh, and uh, 
Oh, the weather outside is frightful, and the people in here are spiteful, and they're never gonna let you go. Kiss that bow, kiss that bow, kiss that bow. It never took off. Only sold nine copies. The whole thing is a bit of a shame. Um, so I don't really have long here to talk to you, but it's nice. As you can hear the bombs, they're dropping around there. I hear you bombing, but you can't come in. Yeah. Yeah. I will just leave you with a, a little song I've been working on. People say to me, a little song. It's by, because uh, I'm into the, the contemporary side. It's by Amy Steinhouse. Amy, Amy Steinhouse. Uh, and it's some modern stuff I've been working on. Um, uh, people have asked me to do a modern album. I've got uh, uh, a few songs like Fascist, turn to the left, Fascist, turn to the right, yeah. And uh, 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 Hitler with the rhythm stick, Hitler, Hitler, das ist gut, say fantastic, Hitler, 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 Hitler with the rhythm stick. Nice to be a lunatic, all those songs here. And he's a dedicated follower of fascism. Say, seek me here, say, seek me there, from Berlin town. The Leipzig Square. Also songs were on my new album releasing next year, of course. But one song which I've been working on, and I'm going to do it a cappella for you now. It's very difficult to see it's on here. I feel like a bomber from, yeah, I feel like bomber over, over London, 1941. Yeah, yeah. This is a song by Amy Schweinhaus. Well, sometimes I stay in by myself and I'm looking out the window and I think of all the things I could do and in my head I paint a picture since I've been at home and my bunk is such a mess and I feel like breathing fresh air and my hair is such a mess won't you come on over no don't come on over don't make a fool out of me why don't you come on read mine camp with me mine camp with me or oh, and Frank's diary, and diary, and diary. Danke, I hope you like this. Um, it's my latest song. It needs a bit of work, I agree. Uh, but stay sane in January. And myself, I had trouble early January there, New Year's Eve. Um, I don't like New Year's Eve. I've got old anxiety. So get petrified by that. Staying safe, safe and sane. Don't split up with your partners. It takes two in this relationship, remember, folks, yeah? Even if you're schizophrenic, think of yourself. I've been Frank Sinatzi. I've been the same. I must go. Frank Sinatzi. Um, uh, yeah, Frank Sinatzi, um, uh, who uh, is, is not to be confused with Mr. Hitler, um, as uh, one audience did once, but then... Uh, he was talking about UKIP. Uh, uh, I, 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 you could be strange. I, I kind of, I get, I kind of have a sort of vague sort of idea of what you keep are, but you know they, they try, bless them. I, I think they, they sort of try. I, I, like, uh, I mean, they're, they're not completely off the, off the skit. I mean, at least I managed, I managed to sell some of them uh, a case of South London beer. It was a case of Pride and Prejudice. Anyway, um. When we did have audiences uh, back in the world of the past, I did this gig once, and I remember there was this man, and it, oh, I don't really do much banter, but I just said, um, uh, as it was just before the 2005 election, so I said, is anyone standing for election? And this bloke said, he is. Um, and, and then it all went a bit quiet. So I then had to talk to this man, I actually talked to him, so I said, well, uh, what, uh, you're standing then and, uh, 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 in the election? And he said, yes. So I said, well, what party are you standing for? And he wouldn't tell me. And it was really awkward in the room because, it, you know, when you, so I said, well, I'm not picking on you. I'm just asking, who are you standing for? Because I'm trying to, you know, you've got a room. And, and, but he just wouldn't talk to me. And it was really, really awkward. And uh, anyway, at the interval, he came up to me. And uh, I, said, uh, I'm, uh, I said, I'm sorry about that. I wasn't picking on you. I said, uh, what party is it you do stand for? And he said, well, uh, my name's Gerard. Uh, his name is Gerard. It was it, it, so. My name's Gerard, and I, I, I'm I'm standing as the UKIP candidate for Richmond, and I I I I realised later this is Gerard Batten who went on to become the uh, leader of UKIP after Nigel Farage, and I said to him, "Well, look, Gerard. I mean, I wasn't picking on you. You had a room full of people there, and you could have made a connection. You know, you had a, a ready-made audience. You could have sold yourself to that audience. You could have get more people 
for, for, for UKIP, but you, you didn't take up that opportunity. And then later on, I realized that, uh, that, that, that that was a really stupid thing to do because um, he obviously took that advice on board and uh, made UKIP very successful with, with, with Nigel Farage. And, and now I feel guilty. I feel like I am responsible for UKIP. I'm responsible for the referendum. I'm the person who gave them the promotional <laughs> advice to make it happen like that. It is my fault. I am guilty. You know, I, I, I caused the referendum single-handedly. <laughs> it was, it was like, it's like having said to Hitler, you know, um, you want to give up this beer hall stuff, you know. Yeah. Give up the beer hall stuff. Go for something big. You need a better venue, a better class of act, support act, you know. Uh, anyway, that's a link and a little bit of real story. Um, so can we have some love and appreciation for the next act? Another two minutes of Pat and Matt. Hi, Sean. Ah, Catherine. Hello and zippity doo da. Welcome to Two Minutes of Pat and Matt. What do you want to know? Well, today, Sean, I'm asking, what's your favourite swear word? Mm. I was afraid of this, Catherine. See, I don't think that blue language is clever or necessary. There's no need to be going around effing and jeffing in front of impressionable young people. Give the children back their childhood. So if I'm forced to give you an answer, then I would say heck. 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 What? Okay, so whose children are watching these videos? It's not just these, these videos. We've got a responsibility to the world. I believe the children are a future. Teach, oh, yeah. teach them well. Let them lead the way. Let them swear. Well, go on then. What's your favourite? I think it's, it's got to be cunt, and it? Fucking cunt. You That's know, um, oh, okay. Well, Even I know that. Yeah, I mean, I've got this mug. Yeah. Um, that makes my feelings clear. Well, actually, no. Let's say, let's say, fuck, because it's a very versatile swear word. Yeah. Um, I've used it in many different ways, much like cunt, um, which has, you know, stopped our videos making the progress that they otherwise could have done. Yeah. But. I refuse to bend to pressure. Uh, I am what I am. I am my own special creation. Yeah. And a fucking cunt. Yeah. You're a heck. I am. I also know that my dad watches these and hates me swearing. Hi, Dad. Sorry, Mr. Math. <laughs> Another two minutes of pet and math. Roll call time. Roll call. Ladies and gentlemen, the first act that you saw this evening was. Oh, Dickie Richards. Dickie Richards. Woo -woo -woo. Where is he? Where's Dickie? I'll bring him back. Hang on. Where is he? Yeah, there bring, he is. bring him back. I'm bringing him in. Bring him back. Here he is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dickie Richards. Hey! Don't talk to him, his microphone probably sounds like shit. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Hello, Dickie. Hello, Brian. So, oh, he sounds all right. You sound all right. That's good, all right. Yeah, well done. Well done. It, it was flawless, your bit earlier. It was flawless. It was like, like, yeah, flawless. So that was uh, Dickie Richards. And uh, who, who, uh, who came on after... Well, and Anthony did a bit. Oh, yeah. Anthony, yeah. I introduced Don Biswas. Anthony introduced Don Biswas, ladies and gentlemen. Don Biswas, who, his sound was shit earlier on, and he put a lot of work into it. Ow, he put a lot of work into it. He got the sound right in the end, and it was brilliant. And he's very funny. Thank you very much, Thank you. Cheers. That was very nice. See, Crow. Al, you could sound like yeah. that if you get Luke yeah. back and put Crow. some work yeah. into it. Think yeah. about it. <laughs> I'm telling That's him about true. a free program to make him sound good, and he, he won't he, he won't do it. 
Right, continuing with the roll call, we have yep. Mr. Alan Lister. Alan Lister, Mr. Lister. Where's Mr. Lister? Yeah. In. Well done, Alan. Your sound was Your fucking sound rubbish was as well tonight. Well. It was terrible. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Got there yeah. in the end. Yeah, it was terrible, but I, I think you and Alan, should, uh, Al, uh, Al, uh, Al Mandolino, should get together and do a double act. Without sound, the sound that he gets and the sound that you the get, sound, yeah. I... You, you'll be in the charts. <laughs> anyway, where are you? You seem to be in the pub. Uh, I'm in yeah, House Bar in Venice. Oh, so those what? people at the bar have been there a long time, haven't they? Yeah. House Bar yeah. in Venice. You're in Venice? Oh, sure. No, Venice. not really. It's just a oh, background. Very nice. <laughs> it is Harry's nice. Bar, though. We had a gondola joke earlier on. You probably missed that. But then you probably had it up to here with fucking gondolas. <laughs> We were in Venice a while ago, and the one thing I refused to do was to go on a gondola. I said, I'm not going on a gondola, because those fuckers on them gondolas, they look like London cabbies. And you can imagine them, if they were talking with a lot, they'd be saying, oh, I've got another couple of cunts over from England. Hey, play your accordion, try and look Latin. So uh, we didn't, uh, and I thought they were probably even more expensive than taxis. Anyway, that's uh, that's all my Venetian uh, material. That's uh, what I like to think of it as. Uh, what happened after that? Uh, we had. Um, you, you sound like you're you're not really of... not on the ball at all, are you? You're just because sort I'm of wondering where just Roger's gone. Up. Yeah. Don't, don't watch Roger. You just you're supposed to be doing all the techie stuff I am and doing making all it look stuff. smooth. I'm criticising other people's we sound. We had two and... men's of Pat and Math. Yeah, two men's of Pat and Math. They were brilliant, brilliant. I love Pat and Math. Every week they're, uh, they're okay. brilliant. You what know about why? Because they send fucking videos in. Yeah, yeah, yeah we had Al as well. We, we, we had my psychedelic mandolin. We had what? We had Al Mandolino. We did have Al I, I was trying to not to embarrass Dickie. him. <laughs> All right, we had Al Mandolino. Sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> and then we had Roger Lane. Roger Lane, who Roger Lane. Uh, is just a blank screen at the moment. Roger Lane is currently a blank screen. But there we go. I, Luckily, he was pre-recorded. Yeah, it's why because he's been married for five years now, so uh, it's all over. She probably came in and turned the light out on him. Turned turn the light out and and <laughs> unplugged his computer. I need that for the kettle. All right. <laughs> Yeah. And we had finally another two minutes of. Oh no, we didn't. No. We had the marvellous no. Mr. Frank Sinatzi. Frank Sinatzi, ladies and gentlemen. Frank Sinatzi. On Holocaust but, Memorial Day. On, yeah. Yeah. Holocaust Memorial Day, of course. No, Why not get yeah. me on? <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> I, I, obviously, we put an awful lot of thought into this evening's line, <laughs> lineup. Uh, <laughs> I've already had s six complaints. <laughs> <laughs> Only six. Yeah, yeah for the people who, who got thrown out in Stamford Hill from the wedding. Oh, uh, oh. oh yes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so that was what do you do? That was brilliant, Frank. And uh, Frank, look back. All right, loop ask back. Al, he knows mm. all about yeah, it. Yeah, loop back, loop back, yeah. To the yeah. days when the nights were young, loop back. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> Don't loop back in anger. <laughs> loop back, <laughs> to the days when the nights were young, loop back. <laughs> we only yeah, yeah, back. yeah, 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 yeah. We're all caught in a loop at the moment. <laughs> it's like Groundhog Day every day of the year. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's Groundhog Day soon, 2nd of February. Yeah. Yeah, Giant Carousel Week. That comes round quick. Giant Carousel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, that, that was... Uh, uh, ignore it, you know. You know what these fucking big stars are like. They never shut up. Uh, so, so that, that's sort of the end of the show. So for the end of the show, we have 
Oh. Uh, we have our, our little theme tune, and uh, which is going to show. And, and then after that, we have the green room, which is the post mortem, and we we ask each other. So how would you think that went then? Yeah. And we look back on the whole thing and see how we can improve uh, future shows. And, and, um, to reference. and we've already had one, at least one donation, so thank you for yeah. that. Don't oh, name well. you in case you want to remain. Yeah, we've got a fiver us. between the uh, seven of us. Yeah. So, um, El Molino is starting to look like Frank Skinner, yeah? So just oh, yeah, uh, scan yeah, the QR yeah. code if you want to um, <laughs> donate anything. Right, here we go. Did, did you say it's in dystopia? Yeah, that's right. Where the hell is dystopia? Uh, well, I, I, I would know. I, I know where Fitrovia is. Yes, we all know that. There used to be a comedy club there uh -huh. called uh, Pear Shaped in Fitrovia. Yes. Well, if you'd let me get a word in Edgeworth. Pear Shaped. It's just a fiver to come in, and we hope that you'll, you'll be coming, coming back, back again, again to Pear Shaped in dystopia. Every Wednesday night at half past eight. Every Wednesday night at half past eight. Right, so. Okay, green room. Hello, everybody. Hey. You were wonderful. And it's, Thank uh, you, everyone. Well done. It's a, a, a pleasure slagging you all off and saying, <laughs> fucking loop back. We, um, so, we're still broadcasting, so... Yeah, so uh, if you say anything controversial, you would be in... Uh, we're, still, you know. we're still broadcasting. Uh, we will <laughs> shut down at uh, quarter past. Yeah. So we've got about uh, oh. five, ten minutes. No, five, seven, six minutes. Five six, or six minutes. minutes. Yeah. You're very precise tonight. Well, no. you've got to do it, haven't you? You've got to mm. do it. Yeah. I'm not going to say very slick. Ah, oh. Jeff. Roger. Very slick, isn't it? Oh, oh, Roger is back. Have you been Rogering? Oh, uh, so the uh, sound went on this one, so I went and logged in through Facebook. I then couldn't get back into the bloody green room. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the technology is not my uh, suit. Uh, uh, we did that ourselves a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> we, we, I, I sent the, uh, uh, I sent people the wrong link, and the uh, the green room was full of audience members, and the ex couldn't get in, including me. I got locked out. <laughs> Probably a good show then. And then last week, last week, yeah, I was... I, last week I forgot to tell Anthony and and the other stars. I forgot to give them the link. And uh, I know it wasn't last week, was it? Last week, week was good. The second week. week. That was the second yeah. week. The first, the first week was half an hour of mandolin right. music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. and you can imagine what a load of fun that was yeah. without loop back. Just as well it wasn't yeah. banjo. Yeah. So you, Al used to play the banjo, and I said, you've got to get rid of that fucking thing. Why don't you get a mandolin? It's got a lovely yeah. sound, and he makes it sound like a fucking banjo. Yeah, okay. you you want to get loot back, girl? Yeah, know. I don't really do. Got that now. Yeah, the whole world. I'm losing I don't want to go on moment, about it. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How are you doing, Don? Yeah, not too bad. Um, just gigging and working. So, what do you mean gigging? Same. What do you mean gigging? What do you mean gigging? <laughs> Online gig again. again recently. Mm. No, not on the TV. No, never. Just been on. Um, no, just doing online gigs, really. Yeah. How's everyone else? Same, really. Yeah. We're all. Uh, so, my attitude is, if you're still breathing, you're winning. Exactly. If you're still We're, alive. And John Sharp We're went on Facebook stuff. and he said, unless you're on a ventilator. And I thought, no, you're still fucking winning. If you're on a ventilator, that's better than not <laughs> breathing. Don't you think? Yeah. Well, yeah. Dream of the child. Well, huh? But I didn't answer him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait until I get him on here and I'll slag him off then. We've only got two people watching now anyway. Yeah, mm. all right. That's, that's more than old pear right? shaped. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like the old days. Yeah, it's more yeah. Like well, even we got I, up to eighteen at one point. I was thinking uh, uh, over the the last three episodes, we've had more people have seen us having this these disasters um, than a whole year's uh, than a, a year of pear shapes. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I, but but that was the glory of pear shape. Was if you had a shit night, you you knew that nobody else knew about it. Apart from <laughs> the ex yeah. and a couple of their mates in the audience, you knew. So we could project. Oh, we had fifteen years of fucking killer, it? and we could still say to the oh, you should have been here last week. It was fantastic, you know. <laughs> but, I shouldn't say this, but once I hosted uh, co-hosted pear shaped with Anthony Miller, an audience yeah. member said, "Are you sure you're the autistic one?" <laughs> 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 so <laughs> I, there was one night we were doing pear shaped and somebody got up and said uh, hello i'm a comedian i've got asperger's and half a dozen of the acts went, oh for fuck's sake he's doing my material <laughs> <laughs> you gonna give john sharp a gig hey <laughs> Is John Sharp coming on soon? Is he going to get a gig here? Uh, not if I can fucking help it. He'll be on. He'll be on. But I'm so Somebody glad to get away him. from him. Somebody huh? requested John Sharp. Oh, no. I know He's a legend. I, I ignored it. <laughs> <laughs> I ignored it. So Somebody also asked for Robert White. Brian! There might be a bit, might be a bit of Robert. <laughs> oh, nice. Ryan, I was at the Fitzroy one night, the Fitzrovia, whatever it's Fitzroy, and Frank Skinner was there, yeah. wasn't he? With his friend who was yeah. trying out. Yeah. 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 And, and Paul John Foot. Sharp goes, John Sharp goes, Who's that Frank Skinner down the back of the room? No, Paul Foot was on Paul he, Foot was on the bill. I, I bet he thinks instead he's of doing funny. instead of doing his normal thirty minutes, he decided to do six hours and thirty minutes. Do you remember? Paul Foot did his <laughs> long set, and uh, there was people coming in for work for the following day, and Paul Foot was still finishing off his set. <laughs> I like mm. room that mm. night. It was unusually yeah. very, very busy when he, Frank Skinner was there, so that was quite. Funny. I like the well, there was eight. Uh, Stuart Lee did it. Stuart Lee did it, and he took a dislike to the front row. He said, "No, fuck yeah. you! Look, I'm going to go and work for those people down the back." So they're, <laughs> they're all sitting at the around. front. Everyone had to turn around and watch him at the back. Yeah, he yeah, just didn't like the look of him. He said, no, fuck you. <laughs> right, I'm ending the broadcast, but you can stay in the room. Yeah, uh, and you, you don't have to see <coughs> lives if you've suffered enough.